I am an 18 year old female working the 4 p.m. to midnight shift at a nice, clean gas station convenience store in Canada. Because the location of my workplace is right beside a highway, it is common for people to settle in the parking lot for a while or even stay the entire night. What isn't common is when someone parks right outside the window beside the cash register parallel to the building. It's about 11 p.m. and I'm preparing to close my shift, excited to go home and rest. Keep in mind, I am only 18 and I still live with my parents. A rush of customers comes and goes when I noticed a car parked outside. Right beside the cash register, there is a huge window in order for the workers to look out to see the customers at the pumps. Many people have parked there before, but none have ever parked parallel to the store, snuggled up to the curb like that. Whatever, I thought. Maybe the man or woman is just exhausted. 11.30 rolls around and the car is still parked there. I had to go inside to shut the oil shack, which happened to be right next to where the car was parked. As I close the shack, I look into the car to see the driver's seat reclined all the way back with a man laying back with a... smirk on his face. I rushed inside and got behind the counter, right as one of my regulars walked in. I pointed out the man in the car, joking that he's waiting for me. The regular seemed worried, telling me to call the cops. He said to stay safe and then left because he had to go to work. I decided against calling the cops because the guy could have easily just been resting after a long day. At around 11.45, I decided to call my sister because the guy was still outside. We live about 15 minutes from my workplace, a perfect amount of time for her to get there in time for closing. I told her the lowdown, which she responded that she was leaving at that moment and that she would be there soon. 11.48, the guy gets out of the car. Well, shit, I'm closing in less than 10 minutes and now he decides he wants a snack? As I watch him, I notice he is walking around near the pumps staring off into the sky, later to assume he was looking for cameras. 11.50 and he walks into the store, not returning my greeting. He walks right towards the bathrooms. A couple of customers walk in, and because I was busy with them, I assume the man may have walked out without me knowing. 12.01 and my sister shows up. Thank God. But the car was still parked outside. She comes in and asks what's up, and I ask if he's in the car. She replies no. That's when my heartbeat increased. I looked at the bathroom doors, where both signs, when vacant, the little sign will be green, when occupied and locked, the sign will be red. They were green. When the bathroom lights are on, you can see the glow from underneath the doorway. The lack of the glow made me assume there was no one in either of them because the lights are all motion censored. I told my sister that there was no one in the bathroom, so I began locking the doors and shutting off the lights. My sister, with her balls of steel, opened the woman's bathroom and guess who's sitting on the toilet? She closed the door and begins yelling at him that the store was closing. A couple minutes pass and he's still in there, so she pounds on the door a little bit more. It's about 12.08 now and the creep comes out of the bathroom, grabs a cookie, buys it, and walks out. He never even looked me in the eye or spoke. He got into his car right away and hurried off. I finished locking up and met my sister at a Tim Hortons nearby. Had my sister not been there, I'm unsure what could have been the outcome. I could have easily not been typing this right now. Thankfully, that day, at the beginning of my shift, I put in my two weeks notice. I had to work the next night, which was uneventful, yet I was still scared to even go outside. After telling my parents, and my mom being a Criminal Minds fan, she thought that the man may have scanned the property for cameras and went into the bathroom to wait for me to check them during the closing process of the store. He may have parked parallel for a quick getaway. 
I'm so glad I'm done working there. Go ahead and give me a hard time if you want, but I'm a Mormon. As many know, we have missionaries, men and women, that go door to door, in pairs, sharing a message. They are sent all over the world. The missionaries assigned to my city are girls. The two in this story were both very pretty, young, maybe 19, 20 years old, and really innocent. Often when they went to teach someone, they would ask my brother or myself to accompany them, just in case. They would usually invite us when they felt uneasy about a person, or if it was a single man, as a safety measure. This day was no different than the others. They asked me and my brother if we would go with them to visit a man named Chuck. They said they had met him at a local park and that he seemed nice enough, but just a little off. We, of course, obliged. They gave us the time and address and asked if we would meet them there. When we got to the address, the girls were waiting for us outside. We walked up the steep driveway to the house. As we approached the door, written in permanent marker on the door itself, was a message. It said something along the lines of, This is Chuck's house. Please knock. If I don't answer, call this number. We all laughed. Who the hell does that? We knocked and he opened the door. He seemed very out of breath and was breathing heavily. He very enthusiastically invited the girls in. We were about four feet behind them, then he noticed us. His tone changed immediately. He said, Uh, I, I thought you two would be coming alone. They answered with a typical, They come with us from time to time. They're our friends type of answer. He gave us an up and down look and said, come on in. It was weird to say the least. The minute we walk into this dude's house, I felt really weird. This guy's house was immaculate, but the strange thing was, there was no furniture at all, totally empty. He had two bar stools set aside and that was it. And on every wall in the house was shelving with plants on them. All types of plants, and literally hundreds. Lettuce, spinach, herbs, etc. They were all labeled on the wall in permanent marker. This guy wrote on his walls in marker too? Weird. The girls sat on the bar stools, and he sat on the floor. My brother and I stood, and they began their message. About five minutes in, he interrupted them. Oh! I forgot I made you girls some drinks, are you thirsty? They kindly said no, but he insisted. He went to the fridge and got two already prepared drinks out. They had this dirty brown colored liquid in them. It looked like muddy water. He said that he had made them for them earlier in the day. He didn't have one for him or for us, just the two girls. He handed them the glasses and then just stood there and stared, waiting for them to drink. I immediately felt like this was a bad idea, and I could see that my brother and the girls were equally uncomfortable. They made awkward conversation, and I signaled to them that we should go. They cut themselves short, and we left. He was, well, visibly upset, and kept telling us to come back whenever we wanted. When we got to the driveway, we got in our cars and I told the girls to come over to my house. At my house, I told them that they probably shouldn't go back and they agreed. I knew Chuck's last name, it was on his freaking door in Sharpie for heaven's sake, and I did some quick googling. Homeboy was released from a police department in California for general reasoning, and was admitted to a psych ward for over a year. They didn't say why, but there was a whole newspaper written up on it. I don't know what his intentions were, but there were way too many weird pieces for me to want to see him again.
This story took place in the summer of 2013. My mom and I, I was 16 at the time, were on a six week road trip across the country. During the fourth week of our trip, we found ourselves in New York. At this point in the trip, we were both exhausted from being on the road for so long and from spending far too much time alone together. But we made it all the way across the country, so we weren't giving up on our adventure. One night, we had tickets to the Yankees game. We went, we enjoyed the game, and had a good time. The game was over at around 10 or 10.30. We were staying in New Jersey, so in order to get back to the hotel, we had to take the subway, then walk some distance to Penn Station to take the train back to New Jersey. So we leave the stadium and get to the subway station, along with the thousands of other baseball fans, and luckily we're able to find the right subway and the exit we need to get off without a hitch. We got off the subway and left the subway station and started our walk to the train station. At this point, it was probably close to 11 and there weren't many people walking the streets. Being from the LA area, I'm not new to the big city, but New York City was a new, foreign, exciting place to me. I was walking pretty slow, trying to take in all the sights. I was looking around and I realized we were right across the street from the Empire State Building. I was stoked and I pointed it out to my mom. She, however, did not share my excitement. With a look of sheer terror on her face, she says something through gritted teeth. Walk faster and hurry up. I was completely oblivious as to what was going on, but because of how scared she looked, I hurried up without question. She then leaned into me and said, A guy behind you is about to grab your bag. If he does, let him have it and run. I was stupidly wearing a drawstring Angels backpack which had been a free giveaway at a baseball game. I know that was a dead giveaway that I was a tourist. Right as my mom said that, I quickly glanced behind me. This huge man was only a few feet back from me and was intently looking me over. He had to have been giant as I'm 5 foot 8 and he towered over me. I started walking so fast I was almost at a jogging pace. My mom then turned around and looked him square in the eye and she began walking as fast as me. We were approaching a large intersection so we started looking around to see if we could yell for help if the guy started to grab me. Much to my relief, there was a cop car parked near the corner. The guy must have seen this too and he turned the other way at the intersection. When we finally got to the train station, my mom told me she had noticed this man had followed us all the way from the subway station. I got extremely lucky that night with the cop being there and it served as a good lesson to me. I always pay more attention to my surroundings now. So, I'm a pretty big dude. I'm 5'11 and weigh 245 pounds. I'm rather socially awkward and somewhat careless in most situations. Anyways, on to the story. I was walking along a road with several shops and a patrol station. It's usually busy, but it was 8pm. I was listening to music, as I normally do, just on my way to my aunt's house who lives probably three miles away. I had to walk because I'm lazy and can't be bothered to get my driver's license. I look over to my right and I see four teenagers. Two or three guys and one girl. And I think nothing of it until I cross the street to gain access to a shortcut I feel confident about taking. As I said earlier, I'm socially awkward, so as I pass the alley where they were, I stare at my phone and pretend to be doing something. And that's when a cute girl steps out and says something, but I have my music on so I can't hear her. I take my headphones off and excuse myself, and she says, Um, excuse me, I dropped my bag, can you get it for me? You look strong enough. It's fallen behind the dumpster. The first thing I thought was, Damn, she's cute. But then it occurred to me. A. Where have the other people gone? And B. How do you drop a bag behind a dumpster by accident? 
So I refuse and make up a piss poor apology that my back has been thrown out and I couldn't help her. And that's when I half smile and apologize again and start walking swiftly. Now, here's where cute gets creepy. Even over my headphones, I hear her just wailing. Please, oh please. I'll insert active sexual favors here. Please, just get my bag. She then proceeds to walk after me. Again, not bothered by much, but she just went from 0 to 100 quicker than quick and I fear she might have a mental illness. So I start jogging faster than I ever have before and I keep looking back. The worst part, she was still walking. Come to the end, I ran 3 miles and never want to walk down by that alley again. I'm very close to my cousin and she comes to visit me and my grandma sometimes and we just sit around and talk about what's been going on. This one story scared the shit out of me. At the time she was working at a retirement community and that often involved her staying late at night in order to help put the residents to bed and bathe them and such. On this particular night, she decided to get gas and a snack since she had a pretty uneventful ride through lots of abandoned streets that were surrounded by farms and land that was for sale. While she was driving, she noticed a truck turn and begin driving behind her. She thought nothing of it and continued on her way to the gas station as she noticed the truck tailgating her on the empty road. She sped up, and so did the truck. She felt relief as she turned into the gas station parking lot. So did he. She pulled up to the pump and watched. He didn't. He pulled up right behind her, boxing her in with the parked car in front of her. He wasn't anywhere near a pump. She said she knew for sure something was up at that point. So she got out and practically sprinted into the gas station. She grabbed a soda and started looking at the chips pretending to be indecisive. She snuck a glance outside and noticed a man get out of the truck and come into the store as well. He approached her and said, Uh, hey, there's something wrong with your car. Although she was driving a 2008 Honda, she knew very well that there was nothing wrong with it. She decided to prod him to see if he was tricking her. Oh, what's wrong? Uh, what? Uh, something's wrong here. If you come outside with me, I'll show you, and I'll even fix it for you. I've got tools in my truck. She felt progressively more uncomfortable, and she nodded, trying to act like she wasn't panicked, looking at the cashier who wasn't paying attention. Oh, you mean the gas cap? She made up something on her feet. Yeah, I, I know, it's been bothering me. He smiled and nodded excitedly. Oh, yeah, the gas cap. I have the tools you need to fix it. I can help you out. Her heart was racing. Uh, uh, okay, you go get the stuff you need, and I'll meet you out there when I'm done paying for my stuff. He nodded and smiled again as he went back outside and began shuffling around in the passenger side of his truck. She went up to the gas station attendant and said, I need you to call the police. Her cell phone was dead and she took the gas station phone, calling the police immediately. She detailed everything and watched as the man looked back at her. She said he went pale in the face and got into his truck and hauled ass out of the parking lot. She was terrified that he would be waiting for her up ahead, so they sent a police officer to escort her home. To this day, she can't go to that gas station without anticipating she'll see his truck. My cousin asked me to babysit her children while her husband and her were at work. I didn't mind since I was off and I love spending time with them. I live across the street from a neighborhood park and if you live in the city, you know the park is extremely populated due to the summer camps they offer. Well, as soon as I walked out the door from my house, my niece noticed my friend, Sophie, was parking her car. 
She usually comes over on my days off since we hardly hang out because we both have busy schedules. I told her I was headed to the park since the weather was nice and the kids can play outside, so she tagged along. We didn't realize how hot it was until we were there for about an hour, so I thought it was time for us to go. We were making our way to the water fountain when I looked up and noticed a man holding his camera. He looked about 60 years old and like your typical tourist. He had a sun hat, map tucked into his pocket, backpack, and camera case. The guy was busy taking pictures of a couple kids from the summer camp program. I know from working in events and photography that if you're trying to take pictures of children, you have to have the consent of their guardian because you don't want to look like a creeper. The camp counselors noticed the guy as well and were talking amongst themselves to see who was going to go talk to the guy. None of them did. Since the guy figured out that he was being watched, he gathered his things quickly and tried to walk away. I knew it was wrong and I told my friend to watch my niece and nephew. I walked up to the guy and I informed him that he wasn't supposed to take pictures of children without their parents' consent. He said he wasn't taking pictures of anyone but of the scenery. I called out his bullshit and asked him to show me the pictures. He became extremely nervous and said no. He left me no choice but to call the police. As I've said before, due to it being summer, the parks were populated, there's a lot of foot and car patrols. It only took less than a minute for the nearest officer to come. I told him the situation and he asked the guy to delete the pictures. The guy started to argue with the officer, but he couldn't win since the camp counselors didn't give consent. The guy finally, willingly, gave the officer his camera and reviewed the pictures. This guy was taking pictures of the kids, but he zoomed into their private areas and faces. The officer kept going through the pictures and discovered older pictures of children like this, but close up. He was arrested and they took my statement and the counselor's. It made me sick to my stomach to know that happened while I was there with my six-year-old niece and one-year-old nephew. I hope he gets what he deserves. Working alone is scary. Working alone as an 18-year-old girl at a full-service gas station in a scummy part of my town on the night shift by myself is even worse. Let me tell you a little about this station first off. It was one of the first gas stations opened up for a local company, and they were keeping it open for nostalgia's sake. This means that it was all much older equipment. Like, no credit card slots at the gas pump, ancient cash register, no cameras, etc. And we were to work in this little glass box of a store of which we sold no product in. This was solely a place where my job was to go outside and pump people's gas. And for the year that I worked there, since it was an inconvenient location, I only got about 10 customers per night. I was kind of paid to sit and do my homework or read. This one night in particular was going fine. It was nearly the end of my shift and I was reading an exciting part of my book. Then, I look up from my reading to see a man stumbling towards the glass door. The sight of him makes my heart stop and I silently thank my dad for his suggestion to keep the door locked at night. This obviously drunk man reaches the storefront and automatically pulls at the door to walk in as he approaches. He grabs at it a few more times when he finds that he cannot open it. I, at this point, stand up and go over to the door. And keeping it friendly, I ask, Hello, is there anything I can help you with? Talking with the door closed, of course. The man replies in a slurred voice, I need help. I've lost my wife. She was just with me a moment ago. I, I don't know where she's gone. And he covers his face with his hands and makes the most fake attempt at sobbing I have ever seen. Then makes eerie, tearless eye contact with me when I start speaking. I'm sorry, would you like me to call the police for you? 
no, no, I, I, I don't know, I don't know where my wife is. And then he does the whole covering his face, fake crying thing again. All I want is some comforting. Can I sit down with you for a while? I, I just need to talk. He gives me an intense look and smiles. I'll call the police for you if you need. I'm sorry, I, I really can't help you. Alright, at this point I'm scared shitless. I'm keeping my tone controlled and hoping with every fiber of my being that he will just go away and not try to break in. I have a knife in my pocket and I'm wondering to myself if I would actually have the nerve to stab him if it came down to it. The man proceeds to plead to let him into the store. I firmly say no and after a few minutes he goes off, still muttering about losing his wife casting glances back at me the whole walk back to the street. I then call my parents and have them come down immediately so to watch out for me as I count the money to cash out. I had a lot of weird stories stem from this job, but this was the time I think I felt most in danger. My story happened about four years ago. I was a single mom living alone and my property is out of town a bit. Not in the middle of nowhere, but not close enough to town for walking distance either. I have a couple of neighbors that I see from time to time and everyone in my area knows everyone else pretty much. This happened when I was up late one night. I was doing some dishes and cleaning up because my son was in bed for the night. I had let my dog outside to roam the property. I have quite a large field to one side of my house that my dog, Goldie, loves to play and run around in. And I was just humming along with the radio and washing dishes. I go outside to call my dog to the house. She roams to the far end of the property and it's pretty normal for me to have to call her a few times before she bounds up the yard and I see a small light in the field that I have never seen before. It looked very much like a flashlight. I was a little creeped out, so I stayed in the lights of my property where my neighbor across the street could see me if he looked out, and it made me feel safer. Whether it was justified or not, I don't know. <laughs> I called Goldie three times, shouting loud because I didn't want to walk into the dark to find her. I waited a few minutes, listening for her paws thumping on the ground, and I did. I also heard a faint male voice from the direction of the light calling my dog back into the field. At this point I can see her. She's about halfway between me and the source of the light. I'm getting freaked out, but I also have weapons in my house and a knife on me at all times and I'm not about to let this fucker hurt my Goldie or myself. I shout at the dog. Goldie, you get your little butt over here right now. At this point she realized I was serious and wiggled her little butt over to me and I rushed into the house with her. I stayed in the house and turned the lights off so that I could see out without people necessarily seeing me inside. I retrieved my handgun from the safe and loaded it and kept it with me as I checked the doors and windows to make sure they were locked and I looked out the window on the side of the house to see if the light was still there. I didn't see it when I looked out the window. About 10 minutes had passed at this point since I got in the house. So I put on a low light in the kitchen and started doing dishes again, this time with my gun on the counter next to me just in case. About 30 minutes pass and I'm just starting to reach a level of calm when I hear a very loud crash in my garage. Now, in my area, the neighbors look out for me and I look out for them. So at this point, I went into the living room and called the neighbors across the street to ask him if he will look out his front window and see if there is anyone outside near my garage. I tell him that I'm going to hit the lights in the garage and push the button in the laundry room to open the door. He agrees and seems super concerned. So I creep to the laundry room door that leads into the garage and push the button on the inside of the door. The door opening triggers the garage light to come on. My neighbor immediately freaks the hell out. He tells me there is a man in my garage. 
At this point, I'm just inside from the garage and I have a gun in my hand, so I open the door fast. There is a guy in my garage trying really, really hard and very stupidly to hide by the side of my car. I slowly start to walk around and have my weapon aimed and ready to fire. As I walk around the car, I say, I know you're over there and I have a loaded weapon. You are trespassing on private property. This is my residence, and if you don't leave, I will be forced to shoot you. Like a flash, this guy gets up and sprints out of my garage like a cat with its ass on fire, shouting, I'm just a friendly neighbor! After that, I closed up the garage and checked to see if anything was missing. It wasn't. I found the toolbox he had accidentally knocked over that caused the crash, and it seemed like his clumsiness got him caught before he could snatch any of my things. I notified the police that there was a man in the area who had broken into my garage. From what I saw, he found a way to wedge the small garage window open and squeeze in. And they came out, asked a few questions, and left. I heard about a guy being picked up for the same type of thing a few days later in a nearby area, but I'm not sure if it was him. This happened around three and a half years ago. Names have been changed. I was in my second trimester of my pregnancy and my husband Tom and I were on a 2am craving trip to Walmart. When we got there everything seemed normal. My husband walked over to the movie section while I rushed to get my snack. Pringles and chocolate pudding. I'm pregnant, leave me alone. As I was walking down the chip aisle, a man walked up to me. He was in his mid-late thirties, tall, and wore a leather jacket. He looked me up and down with an almost sinister smile and asked how far along I was. I was cranky, hormonal, and slightly creeped out, so I told him it was rude to assume a woman was pregnant because of the size of her stomach. Also, my pregnancy was none of his business. I shouldn't have done that. He seemed annoyed and walked away. I grabbed my things and went to meet up with Tom. The man kept showing up and just stared at me from the end of each aisle. I started to feel really uneasy and whispered about the man to Tom. He brushed it off and said, I'm sure he's just mad that you called him out. We went to check out and I looked around. The man was in the next lane over with a single pack of gum. We walked outside and loaded everything into the car. I noticed the man stepping into a big red truck about two rows down. Tom started the car and we headed home. The truck wasn't far behind. I told Tom I thought he was following us and saw he looked like he was concentrating very hard. Without warning, he made a hard left. The truck followed, hard right. The truck was still behind us. I started to freak out. We kept driving in zigzags with the truck following each time. Finally, my husband pulled into a gas station. The truck pulled in and put his car into park. He started to get out of the car. We waited until he was walking up to my window. He was about five feet away when Tom suddenly took off. We went down several roads to make sure we lost the guy and finally went home. I was so thankful to Tom for keeping a clear head and coming up with a good plan to get me away from that creep. He's my hero. I was 12 when this happened. Usually my younger brother, who would have been 10 at that point, and I would walk home from the bus stop after school. Both of our parents worked and we would spend a few hours home alone together before my mother got home from the senior center she was working for. We did fine on our own and by then I knew how to cook safely, how to keep the house locked up, and the neighbors usually kept an eye out for anyone near the property, etc. Normally my little brother would be a bit ahead of me and make it to the house first, but this particular day he had taken the bus to a friend's house. I walked home and into the house and went straight to the bathroom as was my daily routine after school. After washing my hands, I moved into the kitchen to find a snack. 
At this point, it hadn't even occurred to me that I didn't have to use the key to open my front door. The house was always locked when I got home. The only excuse I can make for this is that I was a teenager and I was just glad to be out of school. So, completely oblivious, I make myself a sandwich and sit down at the kitchen table to eat. A couple minutes pass, I'm feeling pretty damn good to be home and enjoying my ham and cheese when I hear a noise at the back of the house. It sounds like a couple of footsteps. At this point, I start to freak out a bit and try to remember if the door was locked when I came in or not. I couldn't remember. I begin making my way slowly towards the back of the house where the sound is coming from. I hear it again, a couple of shuffling steps and then silence. There's someone in the back bedroom, which is my room, moving around. I sit completely still for a few seconds, trying not to make any noise to alert the intruder or let them know that a 12 year old is home alone in the house. I hear the footsteps again. Whoever this person is, they didn't sound like they were in a hurry, so I figured they must not have realized I was there yet. I carefully made my way out into the yard. I ran as soon as my feet were off the porch and got one of the neighbors to come back over with me. He was a friend of the family that lived really close and kept an eye on our place a lot of the time. He tells me to go into his yard and wait there. I have a clear view of my house from his yard and he tells me to call 911 if he isn't back outside within 5 minutes. I waited in his yard for probably 2 minutes before I started thinking that he must be dead or, or dying or something and I was debating on whether or not to call the cops when my neighbor comes out of my front door with some guy I've never seen before. He has this guy's arms behind his back and is holding him. He shouts at me to call the cops and I do, telling them what happened. They showed up and they took the guy away. Turns out, he was wanted in another county for breaking into multiple houses while people were away at work, vacation, that sort of thing. I'm just glad it all turned out well. So this happened to my mom 21 years ago when my brother and I were only kids. We used to live pretty far out of town, like a 5 minute drive, which doesn't sound like much but it was far out enough to not get many visitors unless they were invited. She moved to this little house because she was only after getting a divorce from my dad and the guy that owned the house she was renting felt sorry for her and gave her a really good price for the rent, so she didn't mind that it was a tiny house in the middle of nowhere. So one night, this guy calls at the house and knocks at the front door, so my mom goes to answer it. In our town, your mind doesn't just instantly jump to the worst case scenario. This young guy, mid-twenties, at the door was covered in blood, dirt, and completely out of breath. He asked my mom if he could use the phone, and said he hit an animal with his car and he needed a taxi. My mom said, no, sorry, go somewhere else. At this point, he stuck his foot in the door and said, can I use your phone? I should point out that my uncle, 6'3", fairly big, was out with my mom at the time fixing something in the kitchen. He came to the front door, saw the guy, told him to fuck off, followed after the guy to the road, and watched as he jumped into a nearby field and just started running. He decided to stay the night just in case the guy came back. The next morning, when my mom was about to take my brother and I to school, the police showed up and wouldn't let my mom leave the house. It turns out the guy was arrested after brutally killing a young 11 year old, just shortly before calling at our house I assume. It still kinda freaks me out to this day. What would have happened if my uncle hadn't been there that night? I'll leave the link to the news story in the description. I was about 11 years old at the time and I was home alone on a school day. I had begged my father the night before to let me skip school and I was not in the mood to sit through 8 hours of class. So I faked being sick and my father allowed me to stay home. My aunt was at work so I had the house to myself. So in all of this together I got to spend a school day 
in my three-story house all by myself at 11 years old. I thought I was the boss. It was around 10.30 in the morning when I was suddenly awoken by a commotion downstairs. Me being a naive, incoherent 11-year-old, I thought, Hey, uh, my aunt stopped by during her lunch break. Cool. So I turned back over and for the next five minutes I attempted to fall back asleep. But the noise continued. So begrudgedly I yawned and arose from my bed to go downstairs and greet her. But I needed to go to the bathroom first. Rubbing the crust from my eyes, I practically slept walked to the bathroom. I did my business, then, as soon as I flushed the toilet, I heard what sounded like someone take off downstairs. Like, it, it legit sounded like someone ran into the door rushing to get out of there. That woke me up. It was then that I completely turned into a horror movie cliché. I became the exact person who I, upon seeing on television, would curse out and throw popcorn at. I quietly went downstairs to check out what the hell was going on. I think I knew something was wrong, but being the idiot that I was, I still wanted to see what that noise was. So I got to the second floor landing and creeped around the corner to look downstairs and saw the back door wide open. And I froze. L like I, I actually froze for a solid 25, maybe 30 seconds. And then it started to click. I went from confusion to fear. My heart rate picked up, my breath shortened, my eyes started to well up. Then I took off upstairs into my room, locked myself in, and barricaded myself in by shoving my bed in front of my door. I hid behind the opposite side of the bed and practically had a mini panic attack before searching for my phone and calling my dad. I know, not even 911 first. Jesus Christ, I was fucking stupid. Upon picking up, I quietly asked whether he came over. No, he was at work. Did he know if my cousin's husband stopped by? No, not that he knew of. Why? I told him and he practically blew up. Call the police. I stayed in that spot behind my bed until the cops came. According to them, the thief was only able to grab a laptop and a few other things before, they think, he took off after hearing me upstairs. After that, my dad installed a security system and changed all the locks. Back then, it never really hit me the severity of what had happened. But now, 12 years later, I realize how fucking stupid I was and how I made a shit ton of mistakes that could have cost me. The thing that frightens me the most though, is the fact that whoever it was probably knew my aunt and I's schedule so well that they were brazen enough to break in in the morning. And here's the reason I think this. Our neighborhood is nice, the houses aren't super spread out, and it never screamed, Hey, rob me, this house is an easy target. I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking. Whatever. Although I never actually came in contact with the person, it still scared the shit out of me. And every so often, I can't help but look back and wonder, what if I hadn't had to use the bathroom? It has been speculated amongst my family that the robber could have been one of my cousins that has had a few brush-ins with the law, but we never found out. Hey everyone, this video was a re-narrated compilation of old stories that were on some of my old taken down videos. I decided to do this video because looking back on my old videos that included some of these stories, some of them only had around 20,000 views. I have 105,000 subscribers right now, so that's over 80,000 people that haven't seen some of these. I hope you all enjoyed the video and could understand this. Thank you all for your constant support. Don't forget to send your own personal stories into corpsehusbandstories at gmail.com. It's also in the description. I plan on making a 100k subscribers thank you video when I get some more recording time, but I figured you'd all rather an actual story video over a thank you video. 
I plan on doing a giveaway for the 100k video, I'm just not sure what to give away yet. It all happened really fast. Anyways, that's about it. Thank you all so much, and see you in the next video with some fresh stories.